So what are drift joints? Okay, so let's talk about what drift joints are not. So um, on a stud framing building, um, if you had balloon framing, meaning the studs are going up outside of the complete full height of the building, and um, there was no allowances for drift, when the building moves to the right under a seismic or wind event, you would basically, the wall would parallelogram, and it would what we call rack over. Drift joints are joints that you would put in between, let's say, every floor level that allow the framing or the finish to essentially stay uh, rectangular or square. And thus the idea is that it doesn't, it doesn't parallelogram and then thus doesn't have much distress. So you can see here we have these drift joints in between each of the floor levels. And you can see when the building shifts to the right how there's that differential movement between this framing and that framing. So this here is our drift joint. Drift joints can occur in multiple locations. You can have them in between your floor levels. You could have them um, right on the underside of the floor above. This occurs a lot in floor to floor uh, framing conditions where you're not bypassing the slab edge. Uh, or you could even have um, stud framing where your drift joint is uh, down at the uh, top of the floor. Um, I've done this recently on a job. It created a lot of issues, um, so it's not something I, I would recommend. I don't think it's a, it's a good solution for a drift joint location, but it, it is possible. Okay, so why are there drift joints? Here's one of our few slides with numbers. Um, basically, let's look at a racking exterior wall example. So if we have a steel moment frame building and a 15-foot floor height, and let's say that we design our or we limit we designed our building to a two percent um, allowable drift. So our amplified uh, displacement, the second level, would be 3.6 inches, basically the 15 feet uh, times 12 to get into inches times 0.02. We're deflecting 3.6 inches here, and then it would be another 3.6 inches here and another 3.6 inches there, just because we've got the same floor height. So our in-plane deflection ratio would basically be 50, or L over 50, um, or 0.02L, which matches the 0.02H. That makes sense. Um, the elastic displacement at the second level, uh, if we were to take the 3.6 inches and take out the CD factor, so um, the 5.5 for a steel moment frame, our elastic deflection would be 0.65 inches. So instead of this being 3.6 inches, this would be 0.65 inches. So our in-plane deflection ratio would be L over 277 or 0.004L. So if you're thinking about it, plaster walls, in general, we limit plaster walls on an out-of-place lens to L over 360. Um, that doesn't exactly equate to an in-plane sense, but um, this is even under the el elastic displacement, L over 277, which is um, quite a bit less than the L over 360 that we um, limit the out of plane movement too. So what does this mean? All right, so um, FEMA has a document, uh, P58, and uh, there's an even sub-document of that, BD-3.9.2, which talks about um, gypsum partition walls. This is um, essentially for interior is what it was developed uh, about. Um, I couldn't find anything that was for exterior stucco walls. Um, except for ones that were like the building systems when you're using a load bearing system, which didn't seem to really match. So, but I thought that using the gypsum wall um, fragility function curve or graph would be um, appropriate because if anything, I think stucco is going to perform uh, worse than gypsum. So basically what these graphs do is they have the um, inner story drift ratio down on this axis and then the probability of failure. So what percentage of, or what probability do you have that a certain failure is going to occur? And they look at three different um, failure states. One is light cracking to the board. Uh, DS2, the brown, is significant cracking of the board. And at DS3, you're talking about severe damage to the board and frame. So um, the gypsum or the stucco potentially falling off, the frames warped, et cetera, et cetera. So if we um, look here, our elastic displacement was at 0 0.004 for our inner story drift ratio. So at that point, basically, um, the, there's a 90% probability that the wall will see light cracking 
and there is a 10% probability that the wall will see significant cracking. So even at the elastic displacement um, of the building, which is, was the 0.65 inches, uh, most likely the exterior would see some damage. When you get out to the amplified displacement, so sort of the maximum considered displacement that the building would go through, you are going to have light cracking, significant cracking, and then like an 85 to 90% chance that you're going to have severe damage to the board and the frame. So that's kind of why the drift joints were um, put in was to, you know, basically take, get rid of this sort of racking that's occurring to help limit the damage to the exterior. 